Hello grade nines and welcome back to another lesson with me, Miss Martins. I'm a maths and physical sciences teacher. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to comment down below what topics you want to see next. I do loads of helpful videos for maths and science. I go through exam questions. I tell you how to answer exam questions and I go over what students often get wrong in exams. As you can see, today we'll be doing algebra, which is a massive topic in math and one that often scares and intimidates a lot of people. Now, as you already know, algebra involves variables, x's, y's, find the value of x, simplify, factorize, solve, all these terms, like you can see on the screen behind me, different instructions, different things to do. I'm going to make it simple for you. I'm going to make it easy so that when you know you look at a question, you know, okay, simplify, that means I must do this, this, this. Factorize, that means I must do this and that. It's very important to understand the difference between these various instructions. So we've got different sections that make up algebra, and you need to know how to do those things for those various sections. You can't confuse them, or you're going to get everything wrong. Let's go. As you can see behind me, there are essentially three main sections of algebra and you need to know what to do for each of those sections. So we've got the instruction simplify. Sometimes for simplifying questions, they may also say expand. Then we've got factorize up above me, which is completely different to simplifying. And then over here, we've got solving for x, which is obviously, again, completely different. That is when you look for the value of a variable. So solve for x, your final answer is going to be x equals something. You're solving, you're looking for the value. And you'll see that solving has an equal sign. So let's just quickly look at the difference. If I had to give you this question above, but I had to change the instruction, it would mean that we would have to do very different things. So if the instruction, for example, was simplify, I hope you know that what we would have to do in order to simplify would be to distribute or multiply the 16 into that first bracket, and then multiply the x squared into that second bracket, and then we, could, then we would collect and add like terms. So something like this. So I've multiplied the 16 into the first bracket and the x squared into the second bracket. And then you ask yourself, can you add or subtract any like terms? The answer here is no, because this is an x. This is a constant, just 64. This is x squared and this is x cubed. None of them are like terms. So this is your final answer. That's what we would do if we were given the question above and the instruction said simplify. But if we were given the same question and the instruction said Factorize, we would have to do something very different. Factorizing is basically the opposite of expanding. Factorizing is basically where we look at the expression. First of all, we see if we can take out any highest common factors. We apply various other rules and think of factorizing as the opposite of expanding. Factorizing, our answer will have brackets. So we're making brackets. So this is that expression fully factorized. That would be our final answer at the bottom. You can see we started off with an expression with two terms. We end off with an expression with one term, but we have brackets. So see how very different factorizing is from simplifying. Now, if the instruction said solve, I hope you see that this doesn't really make sense because this is not an equation. There's no equal sign. So we can't find the value of X. They would have to give it to me in a different form. So on the screen, we can see a wide variety of simplifying questions, ranging from ones where we have to distribute or multiply out and ones where we have to collect or add like terms, ones where we have to deal with exponent laws. So over here, I put down everything that we can expect when we see a simplifying question. And now if you would like to practice some simplifying exam questions with me, I want you to click the link above or in the description below. As I mentioned, factorizing is the opposite of expanding or distributing. We know fact, um, expanding or distributing gets rid of brackets. We multiply into brackets. Factorizing basically makes brackets. We end up with one term when we factorize. Okay, one term. 
and our answer will have brackets in it. And here are the types of factorizing that you learn about in grade nine. In grade 10, we, uh, we learn a few more types, so we build on this. So the instruction for factorizing question will say factorize or factorize fully. So remember, never, ever, ever multiply in when you see factorizing. We will do some questions in my factorizing video where you attempt the different types of factorizing, highest common factor, difference of two squares, trinomial, and nothing works. And then you may have to multiply, add or subtract like terms. And then maybe you will have a trinomial that you can do. And then maybe you'll have difference of two squares that you can attempt, but we'll get to those. So if you wanna do some factorizing exam questions with me, click the link above or in the description below. Then we've got solving. You can immediately see that the solving instructions and the solving questions look different to the others. It says you solve for x. Obviously, in certain cases, x is not the variable. So for 1.1, it'll be solve for a. It's solve for the variable, whatever the variable is. And we can see that when we have to solve, they have to give me an equation. Equations have equal signs. Now in grade eight, you learn some very basic equations as well as grade sevens. Grade sevens also learn very basic equations. And in grade nine, we did a few more difficult equations such as equations over here that involves x squared. Those have two solutions. We did equations where x where the variable is in the exponent, as you can see over here. And we did equations with fractions. All of these will be tackled in my videos. Just remember that when it says solve, that's when we need to get the x alone or get the variable alone. We do inverse operations. We solve for the variable and we will always see an equal sign. If you want to do some solving past paper questions with me, some exam questions, click on the link above or in the description below. So just to quickly summarize this video, and then I hope you're going to come practice with me. When you get your exam, you always read the instructions carefully. So you look and you see, is it a simplifying question? If it is, these methods should pop up in your mind. You should have mind maps, you should have summaries of each of these types of methods. If the instruction says factorize, Immediately, you must think of these methods in your head. Highest common factor being the first one that you always think of, then try difference of two squares, then try trinomials. And only solve for x, so only find the value of x or a variable if they ask you to solve, if they give you an equation. Some learners take an expression, so something that doesn't have an equal sign, and they make it have an equal sign and they solve for x when the question didn't even ask for the value of x. Something else that you may see in your algebra section is a question that requires substitution. So this question says, find the value of the expression if x is equal to negative one. Now, first of all, the expression is x squared plus two x minus three x. Can you see that a, that is an expression because it doesn't have an equal sign? So equal signs, if it has an equal sign, it's an equation. If it doesn't, it's an expression. So in this question, they want me to find the value. So I want you to find what this thing equals to if x is negative one. So then we use what we call substitution and we're going to use brackets. So in the place of x, we're going to put negative one in brackets. So we're gonna say negative one squared plus two times negative one minus three times negative one. And then if they say evaluate or calculate, do it without a calculator, you're gonna say, okay, negative one squared, negative one times negative one is a positive one. Then we're gonna do this piece over here. Two multiplied by negative one is negative two. And then negative three multiplied by negative one is positive three. Then we're gonna get one plus three is four minus two. The value of the expression is two. Substitution is also a very important part of algebra, so don't forget that. And remember, when we substitute um, a negative, or any number, if we substitute a number into a variable, use brackets. I hope to see you in my past paper practice videos. Please subscribe so that you don't miss the next video with me. Goodbye, everybody.